everybody, Brian Murkowski here from Hancock County, Mississippi. Um, we are sitting right now down in Waveland. We are under a mandatory evacuation for all of Hancock County, especially south of Interstate 10. We're actually 20 to 24 hours away from landfall uh, from Gustav, which is a Category 3, expected to jump back up to a Category 4 hurricane. And um, this right here is the home of uh, Bryce, personally, and his radio station, 103.5 WQRZ. He is the public information officer for Hancock County. And during Katrina, he placed that call out of Hancock County when all cell phones were down, all, all telephone and power was down, and he placed that call out to let the federal government know that we were even hit. Um, so after the storm, he continued to broadcast on his radio station, which was a solar-powered battery backed up a radio station that was the only source for information on the storm and after the storm and resources for for people who stayed here so inside of that FEMA trail or through that door is where everything is set up to broadcast this is his transmitter there's the equipment room this is the streaming server some of his changers He's got a whole nother rack of CD changers right there. That's the control system for the CD changers. There's the uh, battery backup system, the inverter. 668 connections now. Getting a lot of internet connections, internet feeds of people all over the country listening in to get the details of what's going on with Gustav. There's Bryce's trailer. There's the antenna. This is someone who was the backbone of all the emergency communications in Hancock County during Katrina. And looks like it's gonna be for Gustav too if this trailer doesn't float away. So it fascinates me with the billions of dollars that was spent in the recovery of Hurricane Katrina and so much of it got stuck up at the state level. The public information officer for Hancock County is in a FEMA trailer and the other thing um, that we need to correct before next year is the fact that there are people that died during Hurricane Katrina because they did not want to leave their dogs at home. They went to a shelter, they wouldn't take them in, so they went back home and drowned and died in their house. Um, I know a few cases where that happened. And as of three years later, Hurricane Gustav approaching us, our announcement that we have to make is that there are no pets allowed at the shelters. Bryce has gotten an award for his life-saving efforts and what he did and I just want you all to see that this is what our federal government has provided for him. He's in his FEMA trailer and he's running his radio station out of here. So we are going into possibly a similar case scenario. He's going to continue to stay here, put his life in harm's way to continue to operate and serve the people of Hancock County. Now in Hurricane Condition 4, the National Weather Service has 
forecast tropical storm force winds to hit the Gulf Coast area within 72 hours. Uh, okay, we're going to break into the news conference. Maybe everything's going to go right if you have a, a gigantic catastrophe there on the central Louisiana coast. Uh, however, as the National Weather Service so yeah, the mandatory curfew. They got the address wrong on Highway 6. <laughs> You're watching the live broadcast of some of the evacuation information. We're going to cover the latest coordinates. If you're in a floodplain, then get out. If there is a storm surge that right now we're thinking 10 to 12 feet. We don't even know. We, we don't, don't know. even really know. So if Mississippi Emergency Management encourages those evacuating South Mississippi to contact 211 Information Services. Again, that is the center of Hurricane Gustav was located near latitude 25.9 north. An extremely dangerous storm surge of 12 to 16 feet above normal tidal levels is expected. The Mississippi Commission for Volunteer Service staff members are working out of the Mississippi Emergency Operations Center. Okay, the power of this storm, as with any hurricane, is focused on the northeast quadrant that places all of the uh, the majority of the rainfall, the strongest winds, tornadoes always fall within the northeast quadrant. They are already issuing that warning that we can see tornadoes later today and tonight. Um, so before we even see the eye, and we don't even have to get the eye, when you have these type of winds extending out 200 miles, uh, out of the, uh, the center, um, we have to be on our guard against not only this flooding that we're being warned about, but the tornadoes, the high winds, um, and everything else that's associated with the north. We got about an eighth of the studio moved now. I want to thank you, Brian and Brian, and all the folks that helped come and help us, especially our fine volunteer uh, anonymous donors who brought us those safety harnesses. You know? Yeah. Well, it's wonderful. They're running back to the EOC. I still got to move the STL antenna, and that's what's happening. What are you doing there, Brian? Um, well, we just got the news that we're under hurricane watch for Harrison and Hancock County, so everybody should be getting out about now. Um, the Governor Barber is doing his updates on WRS, telling everybody to get out of town, just hanging out, trying to help Bryce out, and so he can run back and forth and get everything set up over there so we have our safe haven. Of course, we only have one shelter here in Hancock County for the whole area. The military was here uh, as of two days ago, and they were doing door to doors to make sure everybody knew to get out. So I was impressed with that. The Humvees were all over the place, and uh, so there is a bigger. Uh, uh, federal government and a bigger government response than I saw during Katrina but it, when it comes down to the state level and all the um, the steps that it has to go through as far as money before it makes it here and how it's spent um, well time will tell exactly uh, how wise uh, leaders were in spending that money it's 515 right now this is highway 603 heading south into Waveland and it is a ghost town oh, this is good this is Highway 90, and this is Sunday at 5.30. Walmart's all boarded up. Everything is closed down, and there's nobody on the roads. And they've already taken all the buses out of Waveland, so all the evacuation systems have worked. So they've gotten everybody out. There's no one else on the list. I think they got one more person they're checking on. But everyone else uh, that signed up is out of here. So here's what you're observing. You're observing the relocation of the WQRZ studios. From number six to number seven. Well, this is Brian and Brian broadcasting to you from not the Veggie live. Car. Not live, but from Veggie One. Um, uh, it's Veggie One, not Veggie Two. Or in three. case you were wondering from the other videos going, oh my gosh, they're driving around in a Mercedes. Well, this is a $3,000 Mercedes that I bought five years ago, converted to run off of vegetable oil because it was the cheapest way to get around and volunteer out here. And of course, we got the bus, Veggie 2, and that runs on vegetable oil as well. And Veggie 3 is broken down in Alabama. Because we uh, we lent that out to a nonprofit that's bringing down volunteers. We just got the outer band about a half hour ago. The sky turned black, and you had this perfectly defined edge that crossed all the way across the sky. 
Trying to get back to the studio to give the update. We already got trees down.